So now the Sapphire Pro is the third addition to the Sapphire range. And instead of going to a more affordable uh, unit like the Sapphire Lee, now we're adding more features to the Sapphire range instead. The Sapphire Pro is as well a, Sapphire, a FireWire 400 FireWire interface. Uh, you can use a 24-bit up to 192 kilohertz. You have 26 ins and outs, um, of which you have eight preamps, which are focus right green series preamps, or you can use line inputs on the front. You have two ADAT ins and outs, which will give you 16, and then you have SPDIF in and out. You have MIDI, and you have work clock, and you have extra FireWire ports. I'm going to take a look at the front panel of the Sapphire Pro. Now here's where you see the line inputs for the analog ins. So whenever you plug something into these line inputs, it will bypass the preamps on the back. You can also use input one and two as inserts, which there's a setting in Sapphire Control where you can do that. So if you have an external compressor or so, you can plug them in here and use them. Next to that, you have all of your uh, controls for all of your inputs. The first one is slightly different than all of the other ones. You have, you can change it to instrument, which will change the impedance. And you also have, you can change the a pad. You have a pad, you have a high pass filter, and you also have a face reverse on the Sapphire Pro. And that's only the input one. Input two, you have the pad and you also have high pass filter, but you do not have the face reverse. The rest of all of the inputs has a high pass filter, uh, which is nice. Uh, to add to your input. Um, next to that, you have your monitor knob, which will control any of the outputs that you uh, enable the H button to in Sapphire Control. You also have a mute button and a dim switch. The dim switch will cut 40 dB on all of the outputs on the back, uh, but not the headphone outputs on the front. The mute button will mute all of the outputs on the back, but not the headphone outputs on the front. Next to that, you have your headphone mixes. You have two of those. So those are your level control for those. And below there is your output. And next to that is your on-off switch. I'm going to flip the Sapphire Pro around so you can see the back. Now, starting from here, you have power adapter, which screws on so it sits there and will not come off. You also have SPDIF in and out, MIDI in and out, you have work lock in and out, you have two FireWire ports so you can connect to your external hard drive or any other FireWire device you might have. Uh, you have two ADAT light pipe in and out, and these are all of your analog TRS outputs. These are all of your Focusrite preamps, which are taken out of the green series. That's pretty much the back of the Sapphire Pro. Take a look at the Sapphire Control that comes with the, the Sapphire Pro, which matches, of course, the faceplate. In this way, it's easy to recognize which Sapphire, you know, Sapphire unit you're using. So if we take a look at uh, this section right here, this is controlling all your, your analog outputs. These are setting up your headphone mixes. You have the fader going from input mix to software uh, on all of your inputs. The top one is output one and two. The one below is three and four, and then you have five, six, seven, eight, and then nine, 10, which is SPDIF. Now you can link three Sapphire Pros together, and you can do so via FireWire instead of using ADAT, which is normally the way that you would do that. And this is the place where you will find the ID for it. So if I had a second unit here, I could click here and that second unit will pop up and I can select it. So I can use the same Sapphire control for all three devices. Right here is how you sync and enable uh, what you are using. So if I want to record SPDIF, I click here. Now I have enabled recording SPDIF. And it takes a minute to get it loaded. 
And when it does, you will see now that the tab for SPDIF is visible on this side. And uh, again, it takes a minute for it to reload. <laughs> and now when I click there, now I have control over SPDIF. Now the same goes for ADAT1 and ADAT2. If I have to enable it here, and it takes a while for it to reload and change the settings in internally. But if you wait for something good, you never wait long enough, huh? All right. OK, and as soon as that happens, you will now have the tab for ADAT visible. This is how you can monitor all of your IOs in the Sapphire control. So the same goes, of course, for ADAT2. All you have to do is click there. It will appear, and now you control ADAT2. And of course, you can also choose how you want to sync it, if you want to uh, sync it to an internal device or if you want to sync it to a work clock, if you have you know, a big Ben or a master clock source of any kind. And then, of course, you can sync it to either ADAT or SPDIF. Right here is where you select which sample rate you're using. And as you see, you, ha you can actually select the middle sample rates, which is usually um, not, you're usually not able to do so, but you can do that in the Sapphire Pro. You can also shrink it so it's smaller and will not take up that much uh, space on your screen. And expand it right here. And then you can have it floating over your sequencer. It was floating already. You can have it floating, so now if I click on the screen back here, it will not end up behind the arranger window or the sequencer. Um, that is pretty, you can s turn the phantom power on for uh, input, or you can turn the phantom power on either one through four by clicking here. That will turn on the phantom power for preamp one through four and not five, six. And then you have your choice of turning the phantom power on for five through eight, which will turn on the phantom power for the rest and not the first four. Besides that, you can save a session if you're working with a lot of bands and you want to save the session, maybe the band's name, and then you can load it up instantly whenever you need to. Sapphire Pro 26 IO does not come with the DSP plugins, but you do get the same plugins as an AU or a BST plugin, and they look like this. So pretty much exactly the same as they look in the regular original Sapphire, the DSB plugins only you have um, an added window to whichever sequencer you're using. That's pretty much it for the Sapphire Pro.